You cannot pick a single defining game in the Neely era. There were lots of them. But for the sheer drama and the impact on the campus, you could pick the 1957 Aggie game. Bear Bryant had coached the Aggies to an unbeaten season. John David Crow was on his way to winning the Heisman. Rice had lost three games, but with a tandem of quarterbacks, King Hill and Frank Ryan, a win was possible, but not probable. It was uh, a hot, muggy afternoon, and uh, this stadium was just absolutely packed. Uh, tremendous crowd, and uh, it was a real tough defensive sort of game. In those days, you played both ways, and Hill remembers the defensive side of the battle. I managed to get a couple of interceptions that day. They threw a couple right to me. And the one play I remember more than anyone uh, in the whole ball game was John David broke out right toward the end of the ball game. And it was just John David and me out there in the middle of that field. And I said, I know he's going to run over me. I know he's going to run over me. So I, I went to make the play on him. Fortunately, he tried to cut and he slipped. Made me look like a great tackler. You know, I got him down. King Hill scored the only touchdown for the Owls that day after Ryan had driven the team downfield. Hill kicked the extra point, and Rice won 7-6. to six. In the locker room, Bear Bryant was to say that King Hill did everything out there but sell tickets. The following Monday, Rice students staged the lockout to keep out the professors. You don't beat the number one team in the nation every day, and we wanted to show the team... We were behind them. It's not so much the holiday. It's just to show the team that we've got the spirit that they've got. The Owls won the next two games and went on to the Cotton Bowl. What a day to remember. Texas A&M, the nation's number one rated team versus Rice before 72,000 wild-eyed fans in Houston. As we join the fun, Charlie Milstead throws, King Hill intercepts, and when the dust has settled, the King has returned 12 yards to the Rice 21. This opened a 79-yard touchdown drive. The all shock troops take over at this point. First up is Dave Kelly. Dave rides a good push to the left side for seven. The Owls are out in daylight under open skies. And here's the treasure of the option play to keep or to pitch. Frank Ryan is the quarterback. Dealer's choice sends him wide for a 16-yard gain and a first down on Rice's 43. Here's the option with the pitch out. Again, Ryan chooses well and throws a beanbag to Sonny Searcy. Sonny blows for 12 more yards, and that's another first down as the Owls cross over into Aggie territory. This series is working well, and Ryan decides to give the right side the treatment for a while. Frank shovels the ball over to the speed merchant Gordon Spear. Gordon goes to the drag strip for a fast 16 yards. The boom is lowered on the Aggies' 25. The freewheeling owls now change the call and look for running room up the middle. Chilton rides a fast hole and rattles into the secondary to the Aggie 9. Here comes a big play that belongs in the memory books. Ryan heads east on the keeper. And then at the goal line, you'll remember Ryan fumbled. But down there somewhere is J.D. Smith to recover for ice on the Aggie one-yard line. And here endeth the first quarter. Comes the first play of the second period, and it's King Hill back in the ball game to ride a yard for the touchdown. And here, as it came about, was the difference in the ball game. Bobby Williams to hold. Hill to kick. Almost blocked, but it's good. Rice leads 7-0. Now late in the third quarter, the Pelcher drives, he's hit, he fumbles, Alan Gehring takes the ball for the Aggies on the Owl 15, and the Aggies start to roll. Osborne probes the line, but the going's rough. This punch was good for two, it's second and eight to go, 12 yards out. And here's head knocking that spells out the thing coaches call desire. Gordon LeBuff gets three more the hard way before this piece of mayhem comes. one, and again Rosman keeps. There's high football drama on the goal line as Whitmire barges in to stop Roddy, but Osborne got the inch as good as a mile, a first down goal to go from the two. It's the last play of the third quarter. Osborne hits again, but no good. He's nailed shy of the goal line by inches, so after that long walk, Roddy strikes for the fourth straight time, and this time he's over. Rice seven, Aggie six. All eyes are on Lloyd Taylor. He's rushed, the kick goes wide, and that's the ball game for Rice, seven to six.